Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Ryan here ringside in Atlantic City as we watch Harry Arroyo defend his IBF crown for the third time against the challenge of Jimmy Paul, who got here after an injury to Robin Blake, who was scheduled to have his title try. Paul knows this is a great opportunity for him, and he is a very dangerous young man has lost only once in 21 fights. With us, as usual, on our boxing coverage, we have our champion Sugar Ray Leonard and Gil Clancy. And, Ray, uh, let's uh, make, uh, for the moment, uh, as though you're the challenger, Jimmy Paul. You know that you're very much like the champion Harry Arroyo a slow starting counter puncher what would your approach as challenger be well i feel the most technical approach for jimmy paul is to be first initiate authority right away you know tim i've always been impressed by paul's ability to put combinations together and a good punching power tonight today rather is a matter of not being the boss but staying the boss all right well gil clancy let's pretend that you're the trainer of the champion harry arroyo like uh, gil uh, like ray rather you know that uh, you have a very similar style in there against you what would you be advising your fighter well, Javier Arroyo has made a statement that he's the champion, and for Paul to get the title, he's going to have to come to him. I think that's a very bad mental approach. Once that bell rings, Tim, there isn't any champion. I'd have Javier Arroyo prepared for a tough fight and prepared to win every single round. On the technical side, I think that this is going to be a fight that's going to be determined by who's the better catcher rather than the better pitcher. All right, well, let's go up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event of the afternoon from Bally's Park Place Casino Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. And now, let's get ready to rumble. This is scheduled for 15 rounds in the lightweight division. The referee for this bout is Larry Hazard. First in the blue corner, he's wearing the white trunks with gold letters, weighing 135 pounds even, with a professional record of 21 victories, only one loss, 18 by knockout, ranked number two by the IBF, also holding the USBA chat title. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger from Detroit, Michigan, Jimmy the Ringmaster, Paul! And introducing in the red corner, He's wearing the gold trunks with red trim, weighing 134 and one half pounds, undefeated in 26 consecutive bouts, 20 by knockout from Youngstown, Ohio, the IBF lightweight champion of the world, Harry Arroyo. Round number three of a scheduled 15 round lightweight championship bout. The champion, Harry Arroyo on the left in gold, the challenger, Jimmy Paul from Detroit, Michigan in white. And a good contingent here from Youngstown, Ohio, hometown of the champion. And they've been following him here to Atlantic City for his most recent fights. He's built quite a following in the town that Ray Mancini owned, and still does to a great extent. The former lightweight champion, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, two outstanding young boxers from Youngstown, Ohio. The second round, Jimmy Paul was able to land a good, clean right hand, solid right hand on the chin of Harry Roy. And Roy didn't even budge, didn't even flinch. So which tells you something, that he has a pretty good chin. It also tells you that Arroyo is now aware of the fact that Jimmy has that right hand. Most of Arroyo's camp didn't really want him to take Jimmy Paul as a substitute for Raman Blake. They had great respect for this young man. And Arroyo said, if he's better than I am, he should have a chance to become the champion. I'm confident I can beat him. That's what boxing's all about, Tim. I wish all, I wish all these other champions had that same attitude. Boxing would be in much better state right now. I see both of these guys are really thinking of very concentrating because uh, Aurora, he's trying to figure out how to get inside of Jimmy Paul, and Paul is basically doing the same thing. Very good defense. Excellent defense. Two really good, intelligent, strategic boxers in the lightweight division, Arroyo and Paul. Very similar to each other in style and attitude. Solid left jab by Paul, trying to follow with a combination. Another good quality I see in both fighters, Tim, is the, the composure. Very content with what they're doing. Very professional fighters here. Jimmy Paul was a college student at Wayne State University in Detroit. Wayne State Community College, I believe it's called. And oh, there down it. goes the Royal. There's that right hand, Tim. The right, right hand on the button. Ball. That's Arroyo. the right hand we were talking about. Still dazed, too, as he gets up. He had a flash knockdown against Terrence Ali. He came back to knock out his opponent. Let's see how he rallies here against Paul. Well, uh, Arroyo's on his toes. Now he's moving, which means he is hurt. That right hand uh, did a lot of damage. 
There it is again. Now, Paul can't get uh, over anxious because he can run into something himself. No, he Harry isn't looking to pitch back right now, Ray. Under 30 seconds remaining in round three. There's no sting at all on Roy's punches. He's still a little wobbly. And, and Tim, that wasn't Paul's best right hand. It was a counter right hand. Gil is a beautiful time punch. Coming to the end of round number three. All right, we're back looking in the corner of the champion, Harry Arroyo, who uh, took a right hand from the challenger, Jimmy Paul. Let's go back and see that shot. Came out of nowhere, which is usually the case with Paul. Good, short, sharp right hand, a counter, and down went Arroyo. And remember, uh, that happened early in the bout against Terrence Ali in his last outing. He came back to score an 11th round knockout. Jimmy Paul certainly has got the champion's attention. Ready for round number four. Harry Arroyo from Youngstown, Ohio, defending his title. His third title defense of the IBF lightweight crowd. And Tim Arroyo is still shaking his head. That certainly has to be a confidence builder for Jimmy Paul. He knows what he can do with Harry now. You see, now you'll see a change in pace on Jimmy, on Jimmy Paul. He's very confident now. He's aware that he can put uh, Harry Arroyo down. The first right hand he threw in the very first round didn't do too much damage. Now he's starting to get leverage on his punches. He's freewheeling, Ray. Bill Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Jim Ryan live from Valley's Park Place Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Paul is a completely different fighter than Terrence Ali, the last guy that the Harry Arroyo fought. Terrence was all action coming to coming to Harry, which is the kind of fighter that Arroyo likes. Paul is very, very patient, good balance, lets Harry make the mistake, and then nails him. You know, get that right hand of Paul is going to constantly land because Arroyo is straight up. And the minute he stops dropping, he always stops dropping the left hand, that right hand's gonna come over. Right, when Paul can get away with ring, winging that right hand the way he just did then and doesn't have to pay for it, Ray, he might as well throw them all night long. Harry has to make him pay when he makes a miss. There it is again, he threw the right hand, missed, but nothing happened, no return from Arroyo. Also, when Paul throws that right hand, he should come back with the left hook. He should finish up with something. And again, Ray, there was a right hand underneath, no left hook. The big right hand, but it was picked off by Paul. These was, guys, these guys are starting to measure each other from left jail. It seems to me, though, that Harry Arroyo is leaving himself open, leaning in with punches. Under a minute to go, we're in round number four, scheduled for 15. Just there it is up. again, that big right hand. That right hand. Ar Arroyo was leaning to his right and allowing Paul to just throw a counter right over that left hand. Shouldn't do that. That one just grazed Arroyo, but he has been down. If he joined us and missed the knockdown, it came in round three by the challenger, Jimmy Paul and White. I don't like what Paul is doing, Tim, because he's throwing his punches and he put his both feet together. He's off balance and he can go down. Under 30 seconds to go, round number four. There's that left hook behind the right hand, Ray. Harry Arroyo, beautiful left hook. Right hand scored by the champion. Time winding down, round number four. There again, the feet of Jimmy Paul coming together. It's a very bad habit. Round number five, the champion Harry Arroyo, the challenger Jimmy Paul, Paul and White. And we have had an action packed early going here. A knockdown in round three by the challenger Paul. Arroyo seems to have recovered from that, and he digs to the body now. Now, those type of combinations, the, the body shots, they really take their toes in the later round. But you gotta put punches together, not one punch. These guys are really trying to load up with one big punch. It's not gonna work that way. The left jab is the key to uh, set your man up. The thing I don't like that's happening with Harry Arroyo right now is he's giving Jimmy Paul too many free shots. Jimmy throws that right hand, he's off balance, wide open, misses, and Harry doesn't count. He's not quick enough to count. It.
you know, Gila, what I see in Harry Roy, Paul needs to count those punches. When, he, when uh, Harry throws his jab, you notice when he drops it. That's right, right, right here. She's not throwing one jab. He's throwing that one jab, and there he just did it again. He right has to double up that jab. The right hand of Paul should follow him back. Follow the jab back. Well, that would be the end of the fight, right, if that happens. <laughs> Get back to that statement that Arroyo made. He's on the champion. He's going to have to come to me to win the title. And that may be very good, but in, in his thinking, but it isn't the way he should be fighting Jimmy Paul. He should be putting pressure on Paul because Paul is a, one of these real patient guys who will explode all of a sudden. Arroyo landed the overhand right in the last exchange. Under a minute to go. We're in round number five, scheduled for 15. There's that right hand again. I like those left jabs to the body by uh, Jimmy Paul. Well, they don't do too much damage, but at least he's scoring. Well, that's that's the way that Harry Arroyo knocked out Terrence Ali, if you remember. Right? He jabbed to the body, and Ali dropped his hands, and bang, and the fight was over. Maybe Jimmy Paul's trying to set Arroyo up the same way. Under 30 seconds to go in the fifth round, Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, live from Atlantic City. Glory by Arroyo, not much damage done. Oh, oh big right hurt. here by Paul, right on the chin. Arroyo holding on as time winds down here in the fifth. Well, right down the pipe. That's the what Paul puts you to sleep and then nails you. Round number three of a scheduled 15 round lightweight championship bout. The champion, Harry Arroyo on the left in goal. The challenger, Jimmy Paul from Detroit, Michigan in white. And a good contingent here from Youngstown, Ohio, hometown of the champion. And they've been following him here to Atlantic City for his most recent fights. He's built quite a following in the town that Ray Mancini owned and still does to a great extent. The former lightweight champion, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, two outstanding young boxers from Youngstown, Ohio. The second round. Jimmy Paul was able to land a good, clean right hand, solid right hand on the chin of Harry Roy, and Roy didn't even budge, didn't even flinch. So which tells you something, that he has a pretty good chin. It also tells you that Arroyo is now aware of the fact that Jimmy has that right hand. Most of Arroyo's camp didn't really want him to take Jimmy Paul as a substitute for Raman Blake. They had great respect for this young man, and Arroyo said, if he's better than I am, he should have a chance to become the champion. I'm confident I can beat him. That's what boxing's all about, Tim. I wish, all, I wish all these other champions had that same attitude. Boxing would be in much better state right now. I see both of these guys are really thinking about very be concentrating because uh, Arroyo, he's trying to figure out how to get inside of Jimmy Paul, and Paul is basically doing the same thing. Very good defense. Excellent defense. Two really good, intelligent, strategic boxers in the lightweight division, Arroyo and Paul. Very similar to each other in style and attitude. Solid left jab by Paul, trying to follow with a combination. Another good quality I see in both fighters, Tim, is the, the composure. Very content with what they're doing. Very professional fighters here. Jimmy Paul was a college student at Wayne State University in Detroit. Wayne State Community College, I believe it's called. And oh, there now it goes Arroyo. There's that right hand, Tim. The right, right hand on the button. Ball. That's Arroyo. the right hand we were talking about. Still dazed, too, as he gets up. He had a flash knockdown against Terrence Ali. He came back to knock out his opponent. Let's see how he rallies here against Paul. Well, uh, Arroyo's on his toes. Now he's moving, which means he is hurt. That right hand uh, did a lot of damage. There it is again. Now, Paul can't get uh, over anxious because he can run into something himself. No, Harry isn't looking to pitch back right now, Ray. Under 30 seconds remaining in round three. There's no sting at all on Roy's punches. He's still a little wobbly. And, and Tim, that wasn't Paul's best right hand. It was a counter right hand. Gil a beautiful time punch. Coming to the end of round number three.
All right, we're back looking in the corner of the champion, Harry Arroyo, who uh, took a right hand from the challenger, Jimmy Paul. Let's go back and see that shot. Came out of nowhere, which is usually the case with Paul. Good, short, sharp right hand, a counter, and down went Arroyo. And remember, uh, that happened early in the bout against Terrence Ali in his last outing. He came back to score an 11th round knockout. Jimmy Paul certainly has got the champion's attention. Ready for round number four. Harry Arroyo from Youngstown, Ohio, defending his title. His third time. Classic right hand by Jimmy Paul, right down the pipe. Threw the left jab out, delivered the right behind it. That shook the Royal, and we're now under round number six. Well, the right hand of Paul is starting to find his target, which means he's starting to already figure the style of Harry Royal. Jimmy Paul ranked number two by the IBF, number two by the World Boxing Council, number five by the WBA. Generally acknowledged by everybody in boxing to be one of the top five or six lightweights in the world and deserving of this title opportunity. Harry Arroyo is trying to out finesse Jimmy Paul. And Jimmy Paul, this is the kind of fight that Paul wants, likes. He has good balance and he has the big bomb. There's a jab to the body once again, Gil. Right now, for Arroyo to win this fight, he's going to have to start putting the pressure on Paul and rough him up. He's the bigger and the stronger guy. He's got to rough him up, push him back, and bang him. But he's not going to out chess game him, which he's trying to do right now. These are two very thinking fighters in the ring, and it has been a chess game so far, with Paul holding the best of it, having sent the champion to the canvas in round three and landing another big right hand at the end of round five. Harry's, punch, six. Harry's punches have nowhere the steam that Jimmy Paul's punches have at this particular time in the fight. Well, a royal punches are arm punches, basically, so there's no power behind it, whereas if Jimmy Paul, he puts his entire body behind it. Where is the leverage you get with his punches? Yeah, let's, his punches. let's be mindful of the fact that Arroyo, though, gets stronger as fights go on. That's been his history, particularly recently. And we saw he had plenty of power left against Terrence Ali, 11 rounds into that bout back in January. Twenty knockouts and 26 victories for the champion Arroyo, 18 and 21 for Jimmy Paul. Although he's gone the distance in his last two outings, two 10 round decision victories for Paul. Right now, Harry Arroyo is waiting for an accident to happen. Now Jim Paul stands to the body. And a minute to go, round number six. What he's trying to do by going to the body is trying to bring the hands of Harry Arroyo down so he can come with those uh, overhand lights. Under the 32nd mark we go. Jimmy Paul trained down in Miami where Tommy Hearns was preparing for the Hagler fight next week. And he's been sparring with people like Milton McCrory and those other Outstanding boxers from the Conk stable. Best punch that Arroyo threw. M missed the punch, but it was the best punch he threw. It had leverage on it. Coming to the end of round number six, scheduled for 15. You're looking at Jimmy Paul, the challenger for the IBF lightweight title held by the man on the left of your screen now, Harry Arroyo. And Arroyo finally backs up Paul. First time in several rounds. All right, that's what we were talking about, Tim. Pressure. Pressure. Don't stand there. Harry got wobbled again. Paul right hand on top of the head. Another right hand by the challenger. Well, Roy Smile has from Arroyo. He has to get rough. He has to start taking the fight to Paul. We're in round number seven. Harry decided to go out and rumble this round, Ray. He has to keep it up, Gil, for sure. He has to make his man respect him. Here it comes. You can see that right hand of Paul's coming. Here it comes. He's still drilling that right hand to the body, trying to bring those hands down. In it in round number seven, the challenge is Jimmy Paul and White. Harry Arroyo is leaving himself open for that right hand again, mate. Well, again, I see another mistake that he makes. It will have it, brother. Uh, his punches are wide. He threw wide punches. Uh, you know, he's in with a very good defensive boxer, Ray, and it's puzzling him a little bit. 
and Paul is standing right there, just waiting for an opportunity to throw some shots. Good right hand by Paul. And you know, Tim, you can really see them coming. The only, the only one who really can't see them coming, I guess, is Harry. I'm still waiting here for the left hook, left hook and follow the right hand of Jimmy Paul. He's starting to put his punches together. He's landing more often now. Under a minute to go, round number seven. All of the action has been right in the middle of the ring. Royal was determined to stay off the rope, something that uh, he discovered against Harry. Harry's Dunn. leaning, he's leaning to his right again. Here comes the right hand, you can see it coming. The left hand of Harry Royal is starting to drop now from the body shot that's been thrown by Paul. Now the champion scored a right hand in the last exchange. There's the right hand again. Paul landing. Under 30 Act seconds we go. Notice her left there, the right hand of Jim Paul's this man. First strategic fight on Jim Paul's part. Coming to the end of round number seven. Live from Valley's Park Place Casino Hotel in Atlantic City, we're watching Harry Arroyo in gold defend his IBF lightweight crown against the challenge of Jimmy Paul, and a formidable challenge it is as we approach the halfway mark in the scheduled 15-round bout. We've got it very close. I have the challenger slightly ahead, and uh, the knockdown, of course, by Paul would give him an extra point in round number three. I think what motivates Jimmy Paul, Tim, is the fact that uh, he's, in his, he's in the same uh, stable as Thomas Hearns and Whitman Freud. They're champions. He wants to be champ also. Has to be an inspiration for him and great training, of course, to be in the gym every day with those guys. Watch Jimmy Paul. He's never off balance. And if if Harry Arroyo gets impatient, he's going to leave himself wide open again. Watch Paul. He just keeps his balance, patient, fainting, looking for the spot. He doesn't waste any energy. Paul got a warning from Larry Hazard for holding and then throwing that punch to the back of Arroyo's head. There's a solid right by the champion. Paul blinked on that one. Arroyo forcing the issue here in round eight. Has Jimmy Paul a little hurt, Tim? Those legs came up in the air. Arroyo looking at his corner, and they're telling him to keep going, keep it up. There's the big right hand by Paul. It's become a war of right hand bombs. Little redness under the left eye of the champion Arroyo. Light scrape there now. Paul seems to have recovered from that solid right by the champion. Arroyo fainted the right and then came up short when he threw it. Under a minute to go in round eight. Another right hand by the challenger, Paul, and another. And, and he came up with the left hook, Tim. But Arroyo now is saying, you can't hurt me. Look at this. And he took three solid shots from Jimmy Paul. Well, one thing is, is for sure, both guys can take uh, solid punches. Under the, 30, under the 30 second mark in round number eight. An eight round war. Round, somewhat amazing that they're both still on their feet after that three minutes. Action near the end of round number eight. The challenger fall with another big right hand, and Harry Arroyo wound up the round with a couple of shots of his own. It was a bomb throwing eighth round. We're into the ninth. Tim Manny Stewart really read the riot act of Jimmy Paul. He says, When you get a puncher like this guy hurt, get him out of there. What's the matter with you? He really gave it to me. He said, if you don't want to fight, take up tennis. <laughs> Emmanuel Stewart 
trainer and manager of champions Thomas Hearns and Milton McCrory trying to get himself another one here. It amazes me that how Jimmy Paul can keep blowing that right hand, and when he misses, Arroyo does not count it. That's why he's able to throw that punch the way he is, completely confident that nothing's going to happen to him. We have seen a battle of overhand right and a few straight down the pipe, victory by the challenger, Paul. Another good right hand getting caught by Jimmy Paul. We're in the ninth round, scheduled for 15. Big right hand. You can see them coming. Well, that one missed, though. Well, as Manny Stewart said, once you hurt your man, stay on top of him. Don't let him get away. And I think the difference up, up to now in this fight is the fact that Jimmy Paul is a better defensive fighter. Harry leaves himself wide open on occasion, and Paul never seems to let himself wide open. And now both fighters are starting to just fall in, off balance, after they throw these punches. And the Royal caught a jab doing it. I'm expecting one of these guys to go down once they fall in into one of those punches. Follow the short right hand of the year. Toe to toe slugging here in round number nine. The Royal with his mouth open a little more frequently. He is the strong finisher. But I, Tim, both of these guys are in great condition. You're seeing two championship athletes right now. Couldn't be in better condition. Good right hand by Harold Royce. Royal with a good left hook behind it, too, and he's got Paul backing up a little. There's another short right by the champion, Royal. Paul looks a little wobbly. Left just missed by Royal, and Paul bangs back. Under the 32nd mark. The combination's no time to come now. What a fight. A little low by Jimmy Paul, a little south of the border. Coming to the end of round number nine. The champion raising his game here in the final second. There is challenger Jimmy Paul, who just came through a tough round in the ninth. We gave that one to the champion, Arroyo. These are his rounds and have been. Let's see what happens here as Jimmy Paul, a finely tuned, well-conditioned athlete, into the 10th round of his challenge against Harry Arroyo. Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy, live from Atlantic City. Arroyo came to life in that uh, ninth round. In fact, he has a history of really uh, starting his fire burning in the later round. Oh, he's right hand, he's down again. Solid right by Jimmy Paul. Arroyo trying to shake it off, telling his corner he's all right, better get up for a start. I thought he was just getting started, Tim. No right hand with the ball. Jimmy Paul He's hurt right, right now. Right. Those legs are rubber right now, Tim. Spaghetti legs. Arroyo trying to escape from the challenger, Paul. Look at him, him standing straight up there. There he is again. Another right hand by Paul. Can you believe this, Arroyo? He's standing straight up in the air, Tim. Why don't he grab? Walk the guy around. He needs to clear his head, Gil. You're absolutely right. Paul measuring him for the bomb. Arroyo standing right there in Paul's corner. Now punching back. What a tough guy. Two tough guys. Paul has to be careful that he doesn't punch himself out. Paul had taken the worst of it in round nine. Landed a big one early. His second knockdown of the fight. Tim, that's the great part about having that big bomb. You can always even things up. Jimmy looks a little tired right now. Yes, he does. Each punch coming a little slower with a little less stink. I didn't think that Rose would recover from that shot. But he has shown he can take a punch. He took several from Terrence Ali, including a knockdown blow. Can you believe this, Harry Arroyo? He's standing straight up and defying Paul to punch him. Paul needs to step back and get set together. He's just winging shots at this zone. Look at Harry Arroyo telling him to come on. Tried the big right hand and missed it. Paul patiently there. Another minute to go. Watch the right hand on the wall. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. A right hand to the body. Set up that right hand beautifully. Another big shot for the Royal. Refuses to go down on that one. There's no stain now. On the Royal. In the 10th round, we've already seen the champion down. 
He's, but he's still punching to him. He sure is. Under 30 seconds to go. Paul oh, must be getting frustrated seeing Arroyo still standing in front of him. Tim, one big punch can change this around again. But That's Jimmy Paul is dead tired. Look at the way he's punching. This Arroyo's doing the right thing. He's moving his head. He's not getting hit now. Youngstown fans here chanting, Harry, Harry, as we come to the end of round 10. Paul is in we're back looking into the corner of the champion, Harry Arroyo, one of the New Jersey inspectors in there, uh, checking him out. One of the uh, attending physicians came in to check him out, which they can do here as they go back and see that knockdown by Paul. We'll see it one more time. The big right hand, that weapon each fighter has, the big right hand. We're looking at Elise Arroyo watching on with some concern that she has seen her husband pull through these circumstances before, but you have to have the challenger, Jimmy Paul, ahead as we go into round number 11. He has scored two knockdowns. Tim, I think Jimmy Paul had better get Harry out early in this part of the round because he was pretty tired at the end of the round. Good solid left by challenger Paul. There's that right hand again. Jimmy Paul seems to, appears to be so much stronger. It is so much stronger than Harold Royal. It's not the strength, play, it's the snap and the punch. He really can punch with that right hand. And, and he's very good defensively. He is very good. Paul has very good but defense. But he's tired, Ray. And he takes Jimmy, his time. Jimmy Paul is tired, Ray. Well, he threw so many punches that last round. Royal going to the head and body. There's that right hand on top of the head. Royal just doesn't seem to have any counter for that right hand. He just landed a right hand of his own. Believe me, he has a tie. He nails Jimmy Paul with a good punch. Now this fight's really going to turn him out. Combination scored by Paul. Oh, is he measuring Harry now? There it is again. Now the right landed by Jimmy Paul. He's measuring. At this point, oh, yeah, fight, yeah. this is when conditioning plays a major role. These fighters are well conditioned. In the 11th round, scheduled for 15, the IBF lightweight championship of the world. Jimmy Paul trying to lift the crown from Harry Arroyo and Gold. Yet to taste defeat, 26 professional bouts. Arroyo has to take chances now, Tim. He's going to have to start throwing those left hooks under and over. Not that punch, because he's leaving himself wide open when he throws that right hand. A minute to go in the 11th round. <laughs> round number 12, live from Valley's Park Place Casino Hotel in Atlantic City, the champion Harry Arroyo, with his hands full against the challenge of number two rated Jimmy Paul. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, and Sugar Ray Leonard watching these late rounds of the scheduled 15 rounder. Two knockdowns have been scored by the challenger in round three and in round ten. So far, it's definitely been taught the out of boxing. The entire fight, he's mastered Arroyo, his defense, he set his man up, he's landed a lot of right hands. I like the way he gets that left shoulder up when Harry throws that right hand. That's why I think Harry's best combination now would be hook under, hook over. And that's what I'd be telling him to do if I was in the corner. A row of punches are basically hitting Jimmy Paul on his arm. Jimmy Paul also has a very good uppercut. Left uppercut. Yep, there it goes. They both threw right hands that time. Either guy could have went. One must assume Paul is ahead on the scorecards with the two knockdowns, but he's still looking for the knockout. That looks like Jimmy Paul's getting his second win. Tim's starting to bounce a little bit. Yes, it does. And Arroyo almost has to go after him now. He's running out of rounds, and he's been down twice. Well, that's what we said before the fight, Tim. He said, I'm the champ, he has to come to me. Once the bell rings, there isn't any champion. Whoever wins the fight wins it. 
That's the way it should be. But you would think at the certain at the so many punches, the same punch, you would create some type of defense for that. And Aurora has enough talent to do that. Royal looks to me to be just trying to land that one big overhand right, his best punch. Well, that's the punch that does not work against Jimmy Paula. Has it up to this time. He's such a cutie, Jimmy. Gets that shoulder in there. You just don't hit him solid with that right hand. You've got to set it up. Under a minute to go on the 12th. Overhand right oh. by Paul and a left Good and a right again. And another right hand by Paul. He's put his, Paul's put his entire body behind each right hand now. Well, you can see he got a second win. Started to bounce all of a sudden. It's amazing the condition these guys are in. 20 seconds remaining in round 12. Come on. Jimmy Paul with a superb concentration sees his target. And I noticed that Paul lays that left hand on top of his man's uh, shoulder and just drills that right hand. Royal looking a little more desperate as we approach the end of round 12. There's the champion, Harry Arroyo, as we go into round 13. And gentlemen, I think we agree that the champion needs a knockout to keep his crowd. That's for sure, Tim. You know what, the, uh, being a former fighter, I know I'm losing. It's a horrible feeling. I'm sure that's going through Harry Arroyo's mind right now. He has never lost in 26 bouts. He has been down twice in this fight in round three and round 12. So those are, in theory at least, usually in practice, two-point rounds. Oh, he wobbled, he wobbled Paul with that right hand, Tim. He did. Right hand by Arroyo, he's ever dangerous. That was one that got over that shoulder, right on the temple. But Jimmy Paul is such a cool customer in there. Claims he's never been off his feet in a fight, and I can see why. Perfect balance. I expect that same claim. <laughs> Round 13, a solid right by the challenger, Paul again. You have to appreciate the accuracy of Paul's right hand. It finds his target every time. I think Arroyo has got to be a little right here. here. Take a few more chances. Well, that's exactly right, Tim. He's not putting the pressure on Jimmy Paul at all. He may know something we don't know, but unless he starts putting pressure, I think he can kiss his championship goodbye. Scoring by the judges, Tom Figley, Tom Kazmarek, and Frank Cappuccino. Well, unless uh, Roy is able to do something very dramatic, this title is still slipping away from him. He's still capable of the dramatic, but he's got to be a little busier than he is, in my view. Oh, you see, when Paul throws that right hand, and even when Harry Arroyo blocks it, he doesn't do anything back. Wait, oh, right that's hand. it! Tremendous That's shot. it! Jimmy Paul set it up with a jab and delivered it down the pipe. Arroyo gainly to his feet, says he's all right. Now watch Jimmy Paul go to work. Oh, this he guy, is not all right. That's steady. Arroyo trying to find his legs under himself. Paul with another right hand. It's and all another. over. It's all over. No, it isn't over. I thought the referee was going to stop the fight. Finally, Arroyo grabs him and hangs on. Jimmy Paul here in the round 13. What? A standing eight count. That is a new Jersey roll. And they say that it is 13 rounds, Jim. Under the 22nd mark we go. A standing eight count that probably helped the Royal. Coming to the end of round 13. The count, remember, continues after the bell except the final round, but we're going to have a bell. Round number 14. Let's see that knockdown punch again. There it is. Tremendous straight right hand. Now we're back live in round 14. And Tim, a very wobbly Harry Arroyo went back to his corner. He doesn't have a leg under him, Tim. Well, even now, Jill, he's still in Queer Street. His legs are very unsteady. There's a Harry solid left by Paul. Well, Larry has it. I'd better keep a close eye on Harry Arroyo right now. A pro fighter can do a lot of damage in a short time when he has a target like Harry Arroyo is at this moment. Again, check out Jimmy Paul, very patient, taking his time, trying to measure his man, trying to drop that big right hand again. Well, a very game Harry Arroyo 
actually waved to his crowd of Youngstown supporters at the end of that round, told him he was all right, and that was as he was stumbling to his stool. Also, I noticed that Paul doesn't go anywhere. He stays there now because he knows that Aurora can't hurt him. He just stays there and cover up and then gets his own punches off. Two tough young men, and Jimmy Paul. Just three weeks preparation for this bout. He was training for another fight. Got the chance when Robin Blake got hurt in training. Blake was scheduled to fight the champion, Harry Arroyo, and Jimmy Paul on the verge of lifting the IBF lightweight championship has scored three knockdowns. Timmy, this could be a lesson to a lot of fighters. A lot of fighters don't go into a gym until they have a fight. But I know Emmanuel Stewart's fighters are always in condition, and that's the way it should be, because you never know when you're going to get that opportunity. Paul should keep Arroyo right there against the ropes. Not let him get an opportunity to dance around, clear his head. Well, it's all academic now, Ray, because I don't think Harry can knock Jimmy out. And outside of that, I don't think he can win the fight. Harry Arroyo bouncing a little bit more now, showing amazing recuperative powers. Doesn't have a lot of sting in his punches. And another solid right by Paul. Got him in trouble again. But look at Arroyo battle back. Trying the big right hand. He has never lost a Royal. He doesn't know that feeling, and he's not going to quit. Timmy's li leaving himself wide open over because he's really winging his punches now. He's got to. We're in round number 14. Jimmy Paul must have figured a Royal would be lucky to get off the stool for this round, and here he is, still in front of him. 30 seconds left in the 14th round. Oh, you can see that right hand coming. He's not giving up. Harry Roy is not giving up at all. He sure isn't giving up. But Jimmy Paul has just been very steady, steady, waiting to land those big right hands. And he set the champion down three times. Atlantic City, the champion Harry Arroyo, an imminent danger of losing his IBF crown in his first ever professional fight. He is unbeaten in 26 outings, but Jimmy Paul and White from the Bronx Stable in Detroit, Michigan, has knocked him down three times and also had a standing eight count given to the champion in that fort in the 13th round. There's a look of desperation in the eyes of Harry Arroyo. Again, Arroyo keeps trying to land that right hand. He can't hit Paul with a good right hand. He should be throwing that hook to set up the right hand. There he goes again. Jimmy, Jimmy just puts that shoulder up and leans away, and he just doesn't get nailed with it. Well, through desperation, one or two things can happen. He can either land a good punch and uh, possibly put Paul down or run into something. Then, and, and Ray, it's I much more possible that yeah. he's going to run into something. I was about to say that, Kim. Got a very confident Jimmy Paul in there right now. He's dancing. He smells that victory. Right hand again by Paul. See, and he just puts that shoulder up in the air. I'm surprised they didn't spot that in Arroyo's corner, Ray. Tell him to attack from the other side. Ooh, something that they overlook is really costing their fight a great deal. No doubt the experience of being in the ring with the likes of Milton McCrory and the other members of the Fox stable really prepared Jimmy Paul well for this bout. Well, school boxer, superb condition, well, on the verge of a title. Well, like Gil stated, Tim, the less to all fighters is to stay in the gym at all times because you never know when this great opportunity uh, comes to you. 25-year-old Jimmy Paul reads the Bible every day. His father is a minister. A quiet young man, single, wants to go back to college and talks about a short boxing career. I wonder if the title will change his mind. Then for a guy that talks about a short boxing career, he looks like he's been fighting for 20 years. He knows it all. There's another right hand by Paul. Paul in command here. Arroyo will just not quit the champion. Doing all he can do in this final round. You can see that right hand coming. And the only one who can't see it is Harry Arroyo. He gets nailed with it. A very impressive fight by Jimmy Paul. Fifteen 
seconds to go on the bout. Coming to the end of this IBF lightweight title match, and Jimmy Paul has had the champion on the floor three times, plus a standing eight count. We'll be back in Atlantic City with the decision and an interview with the winner in a moment. Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. Here is the official scoring. Judge Tim Figley scores it 147-138. Judge Tommy Kazmarek scores it 146-138. And Judge Frank Cappuccino scores it 142-141 for the winner. And new IBF lightweight champion of the world. lightweight champion Jimmy Paul from Detroit Michigan born in Great Falls South Carolina a member of the Kronk boxing stable trainer Emmanuel Stewart has himself another world champion let's get these two young men here Jimmy Harry Jimmy Jimmy come on in here Jimmy Jimmy I know uh, I know you felt that you were physically ready is this your dad here? All right. I know you, you were, knew you were physically ready for this bout, but could you have expected that you would be as dominant as you did? I've always felt I had more ability than Roy did all the time. Because I knew Roy had a good right hand. It's the main thing that I was really watching for, his right hand. And once I got ahead in the late round, I really didn't want to give him a chance to even hurt me or really steal it from the crowd, so I was really cautious in the late round. All right. Well, you did a great job. Congratulations to you, Jimmy. We'll look forward to seeing you again, defending your crown. Jimmy Paul, the new IBF lightweight champion. Let's take you back to Pat O'Brien in New York. This CBS Sports Saturday News Update is sponsored by Prudential. After that terrific fight, let's switch gears now and turn our attention to golf because next week is one of the great rites of spring.